David and Mephibosheth. Now, David remembered the promise that he had made to his dear friend Jonathan many years before. Jonathan had asked David to promise him that he would always show kindness to his descendants. And David solemnly promised Jonathan that he would do that. Since Jonathan was dead and David was now king over Israel, David remembered this promise that he had made, and he wondered if any of Jonathan's sons were still living. Well, little Mephibosheth was five years old when tidings came from the battlefield that the Philistines had killed his grandfather Saul and his father Jonathan. Well, Mephibosheth's nurse was afraid that they would also kill little Mephibosheth, so she grabbed him and fled from the house. And as they fled, Mephibosheth fell, breaking his ankle bone that never healed correctly. And as a result, he was lame in his feet the rest of his life. So as a grown man, Mephibosheth lived near Lodabar, a northerly town on the east side of the Jordan River, far away from the royal city of Jerusalem. He hoped that David would not discover him in such an out-of-the-way place. Besides being crippled, Mephibosheth lived in constant fear. He reasoned that if King David learned of his whereabouts, he would put him to death because he was of Saul's royal family and he could be considered a threat to the throne of King David. In those days when someone not in the royal family took over the throne of a country, they usually killed all of the males from the previous royal family so they didn't have anyone to challenge their right to the throne. Well, David, of course, had promised Jonathan that he wouldn't do this, but Mephibosheth didn't know of David's promise to his father. So David questions his servants and asks, is there anyone left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? His servants told David of a man named Ziba who had worked for Saul, and he would be the one to ask. So they sent for Ziba to appear before David. And the king asked Ziba, is there not yet anyone left of the house of Saul to whom I may show the kindness of God? So Ziba answered, he says, yes, there is a son of Jonathan still alive. His name is Mephibosheth, but he's crippled in both his feet. So where is he, demanded King David. Well, he's in Lodabar, answered Ziba. Learning the whereabouts of Jonathan's son, David commanded, bring Mephibosheth to me. Imagine how Mephibosheth must have felt when the messenger arrived at his house to bring him to King David. He was sure that the day he dreaded had come at last, and Mephibosheth thought, King David has discovered me, and he knows that I'm a grandson of his enemy Saul, and he is surely going to kill me. So in great fear, Mephibosheth left his home, thinking he would never see it again. By going to King David, he was sure that he was going to his death. Well, when Mephibosheth arrived at the royal palace, he was brought before King David and trembling, he fell on his face before David. Mephibosheth said the king, happy to see one of Jonathan's sons. Bowing low, Mephibosheth tremblingly answered, I'm your servant. He expected to hear words condemning him to death, but instead he heard David say, do not be afraid. I will show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake. He was a good friend of mine, and I'm going to restore to you all the land of your grandfather, King Saul. In fact, I want you to come and live with me here at my palace and eat at my table. Well, Mephibosheth couldn't believe his ears. Why are you being so kind to a dead dog like me? He asked in amazement. Well, David explained that he had made a promise to his father, Jonathan, many years before. He had promised Jonathan that he would always show kindness to Jonathan's family. So then David calls Ziba back and says, I am giving all that belonged to Saul and to his family, to his grandson. I want you and your sons to cultivate the land for him, and I want you to be his servants. He will stay in Jerusalem with me and eat at my table. Well, Ziba, who had previously served King Saul, had 15 sons and 20 servants who served him. And all of these were now going to become Mephibosheth's servants and do work for him. So in a matter of minutes, Mephibosheth had been changed from a miserable, wretched, poor person 
into a wealthy man with land and servants. No longer did he have to fear for his life. He was now taken right into the king's family. What a change. Instead of sentencing Mephibosheth to death, David showed him mercy for Jonathan's sake. Well, this is a beautiful picture of God's great kindness to us. Though we were sinners deserving eternal death in the lake of fire, God shows mercy to us for Jesus' sake. King David not only allowed Mephibosheth to live, but he also gave him land, servants, and the privilege of eating at the king's table. So God, for Jesus' sake, not only gives us eternal life and the hope of heaven, but he also gives us all kinds of spiritual blessings. We actually become God's children. God gives mercy and grace to those who come to him in faith. Well, Mephibosheth was extremely thankful to David for his great kindness to him. And we should also be thankful to God for what he's done for us through Jesus Christ. By trusting Jesus as your Savior, you can have these blessings in your life. So some years later, David had to flee from Jerusalem when his son Absalom tried to steal his throne. So as David fled, Ziba, Mephibosheth's servant, came to David with two donkeys loaded with 200 loaves of bread, 100 cl uh, clusters of raisins, 100 summer fruits, and a jug of wine. King David asked Ziba, what does all this mean? Ziba responded, the donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, and the food is for you and your people. You're going to need it. Well, where's Mephibosheth? asked David. He stayed in Jerusalem, said Ziba. He said that with you gone, he can now become the king over Israel. Well, David was shocked, and he felt very disturbed to hear this report. After all he had done for Mephibosheth, was Mephibosheth now turning traitor to him? David didn't realize that Ziba was lying. So David replied to Ziba, you may have all that belongs to Mephibosheth. Well, Z Ziba fell before the king, and he was very glad that David had believed his lie about Mephibosheth. Now all of Mephibosheth's things would belong to him. Well, after Absalom was defeated, King David begins to make his way back to his throne in Jerusalem. And along the way, um, along with many others, Ziba and his sons and his servants came out to meet King David and help him bring his household over the Jordan River. And as David neared Jerusalem, he saw someone else coming toward him. It was Mephibosheth riding on a donkey. He had not dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes for the days that the king had departed until now when he was returning. Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? David asked when they met. Oh, king, my servant deceived me. I wanted Ziba to saddle a donkey for me so I could go with you, said Mephibosheth. I couldn't do it myself, but Ziba deceived me and left me behind. And more than that, he slandered me before you, O king. But you are like an angel of God. You can do with me what is good in your sight because I've already received much more kindness than I have deserved. I will not complain to the king. Hearing this, David says to Mephibosheth, you and Ziba must divide the land. Mephibosheth was very grateful when the king said that. It showed that King David really believed that he had been loyal to him. Let him take it all, Mephibosheth said humbly. The only thing I care about is that you have returned safely to your own house. Ziba had lied. He had deceived and slandered Mephibosheth before the king in order to gain favor with King David. But how kindly David treated Mephibosheth. He extended mercy and grace to him, and he welcomed him as his son. David acted toward Mephibosheth as God acts toward us. What a wonderful and compassionate God we have. How foolish it would be to refuse God's forgiveness and forfeit the privilege of being in his family. Today, you can say to him, Lord, I don't deserve your mercy, but because, I have, but because I have sinned, thank you that your son Jesus died for my sins and that Jesus lives eternally. And because of that, I want him to forgive me, save me, and give me eternal life. 
I receive him now as my savior. Thank you for saving me and making me your child.